So we're looking at two charts and we're looking at cycle analysis. Cycle analysis, as you saw Arvi do earlier in the show, is a way to understand the money flow, the rhythms in the market. And there are rhythms in the market that go on and on and on. <clears throat> it's how we project in time and price. And we use multiple time frames to be able to help us with that information. In this case, we're just going to look at weekly charts. And uh, what I want you to see is the similarity, of course, between the highly correlated S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And if you look right over here, you can see a cycle low where there is nesting, a multiple cycles that come down. And then you have this cycle right over here, which is due to come down into August. You have this similar thing going on right over here in the NASDAQ and that cycle due to come down and nest with other cycles here in August. So the S&P cycle on the small one, we also overlaid in here. Now, there's a few things that I want to look at. First of all, I wanna show you the rhythmic action in the market. So I'm gonna blow up the S&P 500. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you these cycles right in here. This is a very busy chart and it's, it's hard to see if I have it expanded way out because of the notations. But here you can see is the cycle that brought this big decline, the yellow zone of the declining phases right there. And then this one right over here and this one right over here. These are the bigger cycles and we're not really gonna focus on that. We're focusing on the smaller cycle, the one that bottomed right in here and the one that's due to bottom right in here. That's the same thing we're seeing in the NASDAQ. So I'm gonna take a closer look right in here and just look at the last cycle and a half right over here and right here so that you can see where we are. So the S&P 500, we were talking about the market beginning to peak here in May and then come down to support right over here. So you can see that it just held above support right there in the last two weeks and kept rebounding. Now I want to note that these last three uh, candlesticks here are called the hanging men. Generally, when you look at a hanging man, a hanging man, when, when I did a video way back in 2015 on the psychology behind each of these candlestick patterns. And what a hanging man essentially means is that you usually get them at market tops. And the psychology behind it is that there are buyers that keep wanting to come in because the market's been going up and they buy the dips. They still think the market's gonna go up. But what happens is, is that it's actually meeting resistance. And that's why it's not really moving up to new highs of any significance. So the buyers in this period right here are likely to get hung. That's why they call it that. And these candlesticks right here over here are warnings. Now, this could be the low of the minor cycle we were looking at right here. I actually think it's a lower probability than coming down for the next week or week and a half and testing this level again. And then we get into this period right over here, which is the potential for taking out the highs. And that comes out into later in June. So the decline here into some part late in May is what we were looking for, another rally into June. And then into this big period of risk coming up there where that big yellow oval is. Now I'm going to blow this up for you to see a little bit better because I want to show you that the upside projections for, the, for June are either getting back up to this level and getting into this failure area or making a new high with the S&P 500 getting up above 4,300, maybe 43 and a quarter before that comes down. That is still a possibility in here. We're in this choppy period in May and June, and I think we're gonna really have two-sided markets for trading when I, when I look at that. When I switch over to the NASDAQ, you have a different condition. First of all, it broke further down into support. Also, you lost the upward momentum. Your momentum now has turned negative. And the probabilities of this getting up to equaling that high are much smaller than in the S&P 500. What that tells me is that for this next three month period that we're looking at, that they're probably both going to just have a lot of gyrations in here with the S&P 500 
probably taking out the highs by either a little bit or getting up to some 43 and a quarter, but the NASDAQ continuing to lag. And then after that occurs, we get into this riskier period right in here uh, where, um, well, didn't mean to do that. Let me just bring in that cycle right there and right here where the projections are for declines down at best case to the, we have a major 23.6 down over here. And what that says is that the projected minimum decline into August is 11% from the peak. The projected minimum decline for August for the NASDAQ is about 13% from the peak. That is the sum of the evidence based on price and time for this cycle analysis that I'm presenting to you, with the NASDAQ being in weaker condition and having lost its upward momentum that we showed right there, but the S&P 500 in stronger condition and still holding that strong upward momentum right over there. A lot of chop likely coming in here and in here, and then a decline to those supports down over there, or down over here, which are around the 23% major fibs. There is a possibility that they get down to the 38.2% down over here. That's 34 and a quarter and a much bigger decline for the S&P 500. And this down over here is around 11,240. Uh, in the uh, NASDAQ, which are pretty sizable declines. I'll talk more about the big picture and why I think that if it did follow this analysis as expected, how this is likely going to be the setup for the weaker second half and bear market that we are expecting in the market. So uh, this is the picture that we're looking at. Again, I'm going to blow it up just right in here and right in here for you to see that the expectation is for, and you can see the projections in here, the likely likelihood that there'll be a lot of chop right in here, that the S&P 500 will rally to at least that high and potentially 43 and a quarter. The NASDAQ will lag on that move and both of them getting into a lot of risk. Choppy in May and June and a big drop in July and August is how that sets up.